Jettus Lovers Club, which is a live event promoter, record label, and also artist management. How I look at being a promoter, it's essentially like the most expensive gig ticket. I'm spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds in advance to go watch a band that I want to see. It's a very, very tricky industry. Like, there's definitely been moments where I'm like, that's it, I'm done, I can't. I can't bother with the stress anymore because you know it's such high and low you never really know like even a show that you think right, that's gonna sell out that's gonna sell you know it might not something might happen that week even the weather with some shows if it's raining you, you won't get the walk up It's a very fine balance, I mean, because I work two jobs, plus then the label, the management, and the curating and everything on the side, so some weeks it is like an 80 hour week, and I do plan my emailing around my breaks in work, so I'll make sure like my, my half hour break is spent emailing the agents, emailing the bands, doing the advancing, and then that will time me over for a few hours, and then when I finish work, you know, do it again. It's, it's always a fine balance, and that's why as soon as I stop enjoying it, that's when I think I'll stop being a promoter, I'll stop being a manager. But I'm nine years in or so now, and I've seen to still have the buzz. But yeah, it's always a fine, fine balance, especially when you've got a girlfriend and stuff as well who wants to go out, and you're like, no, I've got to get, get this email done, I've got to get this advancing done. It's, I mean, it's entirely what you make it. I mean, it's my choice to do this many shows. You know, so you can't really complain about, oh God, I've got all this emailing to do, you decided to do it and stuff. And that's kind of how I look at it and that's how the coping was I work with as well. It's like, well, we've just got to do it. This is what we want to do, this is our passion. This year is definitely probably make or break for it because it's, we've got so many shows in the pipeline now. You know, we've 16 booked at the moment, plus a load of curating, like I said. It's, this is going to be the make or break year. You know, we're, we're opening as many shows as we physically can this year to really push it on. And even with the record label, we've got two albums coming out next month. And then I'm hoping to team up with a number of European labels as well to kind of work with some European acts and kind of help the Welsh artists that I work with get out into different countries which they haven't been before. Just try back sometimes because you, you can get like big within Wales and then it's breaking out of Wales is the key thing. I don't know I'd want it to be a Manchester like that man you know that Manchester kind of thing because again I think that limits that limits bands and you know you know you just if you hear a band from Manchester you, you know people automatically assume Oasis or anything like that and it happens in Wales. They, they every news report I've seen that's vaguely about Welsh music they want to go for the phonics in the background or the Manics, and they never think of you know the other bands that are out there that are doing just as well, like the Joy Formidables. You could put them in that bracket. Hopefully, they would be the ones soundtracking, not the same old bands that you've heard for the last 12 years. 